அடுத்தபடியாக பேசிக் ஜென்டிக்ஸ் ஃபியூ மினிட்ஸ் எல்லாமே கொஞ்சம் நேரம் தான் இருக்கும் உங்களுக்கு அதுக்கடுத்து மேடம் அவர்களே மேடம் ஹலோ ஹாய் ஓகே ஸோ ஐ டோன்ட் நோ தட் மச் ஆஃப் தமிழ் ஸோ ஐ யூ வில் ஹாவ் டு பேர் வித் மை இங்கிலீஷ் ஓகே ஐ வில் ட்ரை டு கீப் திஸ் டாக் ஷார்ட் ஸோ தட் யூ கேன் கெட் டு லன்ச் அஸ் சூன் எஸ் பாசிபிள் கொஞ்சம் காம்ப்ளிகேட்டட் டாபிக் தான் ஜெனட்டிக்ஸ் ஸோ ஐ ட்ரை டு கோ அ லிட்டில் பிட் பேசிக் எஸ் ஐ கேன் So I'm Dr. Fiona and I'm the head of scientific operations at Anderson Genetics and we'll take you through a little bit of basics of how we start genetic testing. So right now application of genetic testing is used in many many fields starting from predisposition testing, preventive genetics to diagnose genetic disorder for treatment monitoring as well as for prognosis. this is divided into five main categories so we do genetic testing in prenatal division in fertility in oncology in neurology in infectious also so for today's topic i will stick to only reproductive genomics otherwise it will be a long uh, talk in mainly reproductive genomics we perform genetic testing in sperm embryos blood samples amniotic fluids chorionic villus samples and what we call product of conception so as i go forward i will give you details on what all of these samples mean so mainly you know our body is made up of cells right any human has idea how many cells is our body made of any idea trillions of cells every part of our body is made up of cells and most of those cells contain a nucleus with a dna only one kind of cell sample does not contain dna any idea what it is does anyone know there is one cell in the body which does not contain dna exactly rbcs rbcs are the only cells that do not contain dna every other cell contains dna i can get dna from your hair from your skin and when i take your blood sample can i extract a dna can i get dna in blood sample what is the main constitution of blood rbc is done eh yes then where is the dna coming from lymphocytes right when you centrifuge blood it separates it separates into serum and uh, rbcs and you have a buffy coat in between which is called the lymphocytes that is where we get our dna from so each cell inside it has dna which is divided into 23 pairs of chromosomes this x shaped structure there are 23 pairs of them if you open the chromosome it splits into a stringle a uh, double stranded structure called what we commonly known as deoxyribonucleic acid so a part of that dna is called a gene and that is where information lies on how to make the body how the body should function what task should be performed all this information we are born with at the time of our birth our body has all the information it needs to function but all information cannot be given at the same time right that's why we have semesters and modules so in order to control the body's expression dna is then converted to rna rna is the functional version of dna rna is then converted into any idea what is it converted to proteins proteins are the main events which trigger the next set of biochemical molecules okay so regulation of how the genetic uh, conditions are expressed is regulated at the dna level rna level and protein level so this is what we call a karyotype a karyotype is basically an image of all the chromosomes of your body so here you can see all the 23 chromosomes they are numbered based on their any idea what they numbered based on size you can see chromosome 1 is biggest chromosome and the smallest chromosome is chromosome y okay females have two x chromosomes and males have one x and one y chromosome so what can go wrong with this many things can go wrong with it first thing you can get one extra chromosome one single extra chromosome can cause a very big condition it's called down syndrome anybody is familiar anyone heard of down syndrome mongolian child 
it is caused only by one extra chromosome 21 same way you can get extra chromosomes anywhere so these are called trisomy you can get all chromosomes in three copies it is called triploidy you can get one chromosome missing it's called monosomy mostly seen in sex chromosomes there are some other versions of chromosome changes they are called structural variations it is possible for one chromosome to break rotate itself and fit back again it's called inversion it is possible for two chromosomes to break change the place translocation so what is the test to detect all these kind of variations one single very common test called as karyotyping next set of things that can go wrong if you look deeper into the dna you can get mutation spelling mistake pandranga thane nare per exam la in hurry while copying from somebody that is basically the definition of mutation at only one single point in the dna if one letter changes from a to c you get a genetic disorder another set of condition called deletion when you forget to write one word same way one part of the dna can go missing when the baby is being formed you can also get duplication two copies of the same information which is also dangerous so for each of these tests we have different different kind of genetic tests that are used so basic first test is karyotyping it is done it's a blood sample test does not require any preparation can be done at any time but it takes time to process the test it takes almost a week to complete the analysis for a karyotyping there is another sample that we use for karyotyping called amniotic fluid anybody knows what is an amniotic fluid what is amniotic fluid it is the water that surrounds the baby when a mother is pregnant the water that is surrounding the baby is secreted by the baby so whatever sample when we test it means that it is the correct sample of the child so the main tube that is used for conventional karyotyping is what is this green cap tube just now you had a session right heparin yes sodium heparin tubes is what we use for karyotyping it is a culture based setup so we need usually two tubes 2 ml each most genetic tests can be run within 2 ml of blood another sample that i spoke about is amniotic fluid so this is what it looks like amniotic fluid is taken by one invasive procedure that means there's a fetal medicine specialist who will put a needle into the pregnant woman's stomach and remove the water surrounding the baby the fluid is usually canary yellow in color similar to most of body fluids any other body fluid which is this color any idea which is the most common body fluid which is this same color urine yes so you can imagine when all the sample come to the lab for entry if there is any mistake in interpreting what the sample is it can get lost the procedure involves 1% risk of miscarriage so repeat sample kekka mudiyadu right so this sample is shipped in extremely sterile conditions if there is any contamination microbial sample near to this sample it can cause failure of culture because microorganisms in culture will stop the growth of lymphocytes and the test will fail and then we won't be able to give any answer on why, what is gone wrong with the baby so usually this amniotic fluid culture cells are very lazy okay they take two weeks to grow if you give one blood sample how much time will you wait to get report within 5 hours you'll call the lab and say where is my report correct everybody wants 24 hour reporting within few hours you want the result but imagine a pregnant mother waiting for 2 weeks to know what is the condition of her baby we can't wait no 2 weeks is too long so what we developed we developed rapid aneuploidy testing that means these are fast tests which will give you a report within 24 hours it is called fish not the fish what we eat fluorescent in situ hybridization here we have certain probes which are tagged with fluorescent dyes focused at particular chromosomes so this is added to a cell in the from the amniotic fluid and it will give signals so if i have 13th chromosome it will be tagged with green signal so i have here two green signals can you see so there are two copies of 13th chromosome 
So 18th chromosome is tagged with red signal. So two red signals. 21st chromosome tagged with aqua signals. So this way we will be able to diagnose the patient that all these three chromosomes are in normal number within 24 hours. But this test can see only three chromosomes. We have 23 chromosomes to worry about, right? And then we have deletions and duplications to worry about next. To take care of that, there is an advanced molecular technique called microarray. In this technique, there is a chip with so many probes. For fish, I used three probes, right? And I added to the cell. Here, the chip has probes for whole DNA, the entire range. And when we add DNA sample to it, the probe will bind to the DNA sample and tell me if the DNA has any deletions, duplications, and what is the chromosome number. So these probes come in different, different resolution based on the size of the DNA I want to see. So right now, we have three resolutions. We have 315K, 750K, and one is 1.5 million K. So applications of microarray are used for many things. They are used for um, intellectual disabilities. We get samples from newborn babies. We get samples from um, small children, 10 to 12 years. We can take samples from adults. We also get this sample for one main thing called POC, product of conception. Product of conception usually we get when we have miscarriages. Everybody familiar what is miscarriage? Yes. Miscarriage are both, they will go to, do, uh, to the hospital, correct? Then they will take out the fetus which is dying because the fetus is dead now. It is very important to test the sample to know what has gone wrong with this baby. Why miscarriages has happened. Only if we know what has happened with this baby, we can avoid the miscarriages from happening further. We cannot change it but... Additional tests can be given for safety to make sure the mother conceives healthy baby next time. For that, the sample is product of conception. The most important thing while getting tissue samples, okay? For all pathological conditions, what do we do? We take tissue and put in 10% formalin, correct? Pathology department will be very happy. Genetic department is never happy. Formalin will completely destroy the DNA. So if this product of conception tissue comes in contact with the formalin, we cannot extract any DNA. No test can be done. Full sample waste argon. That is why it is very important that any miscarriage tissue is rinsed in saline, then put in uh, uh, saline with gentamicin. Gentamicin will avoid contamination. Why am I worried about contamination in POC tissue? Any idea? The tissue is dying, right? It's a dead tissue of, of a dead baby. So what happens is it can cause contamination to grow, degradation ago. So basically these samples have to be put in saline. Once the sample goes in saline, I can extract DNA. Once the DNA is out, I can use it for any test that I, I need. So while looking at the DNA, I said about genes, right? Genes Pakamoda, it is a huge set, millions and millions of genes. So we can't look at everything in one shot, right? Takes time. So the best, most recent technology for it is called next generation sequencing. This is able to visualize the whole DNA in one shot, depending on the resolution what I want to look at. So first thing next generation sequencing can do, it can look at all the chromosomes. Number sari irka illa pakambo Next, mutation irka illa depends on what is the panel I'm looking at. So next generation sequencing panels are different, different sizes. We can look at genes involved with mitochondria, 37 are there. We can look at a small panel of 8 to 6,000. We can look at bigger panels of 22,000 or we can also look at the full genome. This will be based on indication alone. Have anybody heard this test, NIPT? No? Okay. I told you about amniocentesis, Allah. You Will you be ready to allow me to poke a needle into your stomach? Anybody? If I tell I have to poke needle into your stomach and take out some sample, will you allow me? Bayamagir kala. Imagine your mother is carrying a baby. I can't put needle into every mother. So to avoid unnecessary procedure, there are screening tests available. Either screening test will is only a blood sample. Blood sample at the tur, we can do non-invasive testing for chromosome 13, 18, 21. How? 
when a mother is pregnant the mother has her dna in her blood but the baby also releases its dna into the mother's blood because of which if i remove mother's blood i will get something called a cell free dna dna which is outside the cells not inside the cells cell free dna can come from both the mother and the fetus with the next generation sequencing technology we can count how many chromosomes are there in the cell free dna if we get four chromosomes that means two chromosomes are of the mother two chromosomes are of the baby so i don't need to do invasive testing this is a low risk report but it is a screening test if i get five chromosomes mother has two fetus has three that means baby is affected with some condition then we will send to fetal medicine they will do invasive procedure take out amniotic fluid and then go for it so the sample is collected in a very particular strange tube called strek tube okay it usually has a military cap this is the company and it is glass tube this particular test requires 10 ml complete blood if the blood clots the test will fail so we need 10 ml blood and it is usually shipped in room temperature so this is the procedure i spoke about amniocentesis but all patients are not ready to wait until 16 weeks amniocentesis is done only at 16 weeks so if they want early we can put the needle and take out part of the placenta the placenta has so has cells of the fetus it is a process called chorionic villus sampling it separate kit varo idak after 5 9 to 11 weeks this procedure can be done cvs beyond 9 to 11 weeks when we reach 15 to 17 week window we can do amniocentesis all these tests will be completed in a period of 2 to 3 weeks so before 24 weeks we have to give result to the doctors so the next level of screening so we can do screening from individuals then we can screen the babies non invasively then we can screen babies with invasive testing and next level we screen babies is when they are born by newborn screening everybody familiar with newborn screening no anybody knows what is newborn screening heel prick method theriyuma yes we can take um, four, five to six blood spots from the baby for biochemical screening for genetic disorders it's called newborn screening if any of the biochemical uh, biochemical screening gives high risk these are all genetic conditions so we can go for next generation sequencing based testing to find out genetic cause what is the use baby already affected ala biochemical screening podum dane why to do very expensive genetic testing it is to plan for the next pregnancy if we know there is a genetic problem in this baby that means the next baby can also be affected so we can test the parents and give preventive genetics options epdi pandranga preventive genetics is mainly done through ivf in vitro fertilization when we go to ivf lab we can take out the sperm and get eggs out of the mother inject the sperm into the egg the technique is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection after this this is a fertilization technique after fertilization embryos are grown in the lab for 5 days on the 5th day one cell embryo will become up to 125 cell embryo then i can take a embryo biopsy biopsy will take only 6 to 8 cells out of the embryo and they will freeze the embryo embryo freezing is very simple we can freeze embryos for many many years even 24 years 50 years 100 years nothing will happen this small biopsy will go to the genetics lab the genetics lab can test and tell if this embryo is carrying a mutation or not and based on that healthy embryo is taken out of cryopreservation transferred to the mother and she has got get pregnant so anderson has been doing this for over 6 years now and we've got several healthy babies from many many genetic conditions that have been avoided to pass the most common condition we usually test for is called thalassemia can screen with one blood test from parents right so this is where that test ends up after the biochemical test genetic tests are done and we can avoid in the next pregnancy another package what we do usually is male infertility usually it is not possible to test eggs why why can't we do test in eggs any idea every woman ovulates only one egg in a month we have to give lot of very expensive injections to get eggs out so eggs are very expensive and very precious so te no test can be performed on eggs it is not allowed 
but we can test on sperm sperm sample is readily available so in sperm we usually analyze how quick the sperm can swim what is the count of the sperm what is the morphological appearance of the sperm and the main purpose of the sperm is what what is the purpose of sperm any idea the sperm has only one functional work it has a head and a tail the tail's job is to swim and the head has only dna nothing else its only job is to deliver the male factor of the dna into the baby so if any break is there inside this dna it can cause miscarriage so we can also analyze dna fragmentation of the sperm if the chromosome number in the sperm changes those tests also are possible how are the tests done semen sample is collected in ivf lab it is frozen even sperm can be frozen egg can be frozen embryos can be frozen so one sample is frozen it will be shipped to the genetics lab and genetics lab will be able to can you people paying attention so much of noise in the background hungry ah huh? shall i stop yes almost one slide only done okay please pinadi konja pesam varunga so the last test is done in uh, male infertility is when there are no sperm in the sample if somebody does not have sperm one simple blood test will tell me what is wrong with the y chromosome y chromosome is the most important factor for male fertility so any deletion on the y chromosome will tell us why there are no sperm in the sample so basically i need what tube what tube is this edta tube this is another application of the edta tube main sample for dna collection is always taken in edta tube for any genetic condition we take edta tube to extract the dna what else do we take for karyotyping heparin tube so in genetics we mainly use only three types of tubes one is the edta tube for dna extraction heparin tube for karyotyping and streck tube for nipt okay these are the main samples so that's about it sorry i did not take much time any questions you have i think nobody listened only everybody is too hungry any questions no okay we can close the session then thank you